Hello, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is MG Ovia, and I'm joined with by Garrett with OG. Uh, today's uh, presentation is going to be over um, excavation around electricity and electric safety. So I appreciate you all being a part of this. Um, let me mute Garrett's microphone for just a second. There we go. Um, that just cleans up the feedback. I promise he'll be live here in just a moment. Um, just want to go over the go to webinar interface. If you haven't used it before, um, there is an orange arrow. That's the magic button. If it disappears on you, just click that orange arrow to open right back up. If you have any questions um, for either Garrett or myself at any time, use that uh, questions feature. Um, throw that into us, and we will um, handle those at the end of the presentation. And um, also, just a reminder: if you weren't aware, um, at the end of the presentation. After we finish up those questions, we will be doing a drawing for a $25 gift card to Amazon as well. Um, so without much further ado, let's turn it over to Garrett. Um, again, Garrett's with OG&E, and we appreciate your time and knowledge that you're going to be sharing with us today over electric safety. So take off, Garrett. Thanks, MG. Hi, everybody. Uh, like you said, my name is Garrett Bernethi. I'm I uh, work at OG&E. Uh, I've been there for uh, going on 18 years now, and uh, in my time, uh, majority of that's been spent in construction. I uh, started out as a meter reader, if you remember those, back in 2005, and then uh, was worked on a line crew for a number of years, and I went to uh, uh, the trouble department, so I was a first responder for a good while, and now I work with our contractors for our large capital projects um that have to do with overhead underground as well as grid enhancement um, for uh for our system that uh really covers the majority of oklahoma a pretty good pretty good part of it we actually go off into uh, arkansas all the way east to clarksville and uh so if you're ever out that way uh, majority of the time or a good portion of that time you're going to be on our system if you're traveling anywhere off i-40 and and south of there uh, once you get over to Clarksville. So we cover a pretty good area and that's kind of the area that I cover uh, with this. And a uh, large part of what we do is, is um, do a lot of feeder work. We do a lot of uh, residential underground uh, additions and uh, we, real, we redo pole lines and you know just all kinds of stuff that we do. And so um, I've been doing this for, for quite a while. Uh, I've also been on the operating committee for OKA11 for, uh, I guess, going on about six and a half to seven years, I guess, at this point. Um, enjoyed my time working with them and always appreciate the opportunity uh, that I have to uh, to uh, work with the good folks there at Oki. And so uh, now I'm going to kind of get rid of myself here so that you can see my uh, the presentation. And we'll make this as short and sweet as as possible. I know that a lot of people have things to do. So um, here again, we are, uh, of course, doing the safety today. I hope it's been uh, good for you and been very helpful to you. At OG and e we are very uh, focused on safety. It really is a priority for us. A number of years ago, we had probably one of the worst years on record as far as uh, accidents. And uh, and so there was a there was a large turnaround that we had uh, at OG&E and, and, and uh, where we really began to change the culture that we were in. And uh, we set that, that standard of, of zero. And that's where we really tried to hold, not just for OG&E, but also for our contractors that work with and for us, as well as other people that are working uh, in or around our lines uh, all over uh, our system. You know, one of the hard things that uh, that we really encounter a lot is there's no way that we can make our system foolproof uh, for safety, if that makes any sense. If people want to get into our, our lines or our facilities, they're pretty much going to get into them. But what we're really talking about is, is the, the different situations that you're not wanting to get into our facilities and you're wanting to dig or, or do something as safe as possible and this is something that we can do to help you um, help you understand our facilities so that whenever you are uh, doing anything from putting a fence into your backyard to uh, installing something uh, in an addition or maybe even digging across a large pasture for pipeline, 
if we're anywhere in those uh, in those areas, this may hopefully help you to think about a few things as we go throughout uh, as we go throughout this session uh, together. Uh, in looking at some of our wire, if we were in person, uh, I would actually have some of these out that you could look at. But we have a lot of different uh, wire types that we use, and this these serve as our uh, underground service and secondary cables that we use. It should be on your left, that coil of wire right there. That's our two conductor 12 wire that we mainly use for street lighting. We also have uh, some wire that is a two conductor four that looks kind of like the stuff over on the right side, but there's only two different wires on that. All of that's mainly used for wire, uh, for lighting. It mainly is in pipe. We use gray pipe. Uh, but if you're ever around an area where you see lights, chances are you're going to find that coil of wire there uh, that is under the ground. And it's only going to be about 12 to 18 inches underground feeding all of those lights. On the middle and right side, uh, which should be your screen there, we have our uh, secondary and service wire that we will feed houses or apartments or businesses, things like that. The, the one on the far right that has the three uh, different cables to it, that mainly is going to be used from uh, transformer to pedestal, pedestal to house. Uh, that's mainly our secondary and service wire uh, that we use for that. And then the four conductor that you find in the middle, a lot of times that's used for three phase business. So if you ever go to a uh, a, a large business office or maybe a warehouse or something like that, you'll, you'll find that they use a lot of three-phase equipment and that's for generally what we use uh, to serve uh, that customer. Now in this, you can actually see on each one in the middle and the right uh, sections there on those uh, cables, you can find that there's one cable that has a kind of a yellowish green stripe on it. That's the neutral. Uh, grounding uh, cable that we use and we we ground our system and strive to ground our system very well and that is what the what is serves as the ground or the neutral uh, for our system that goes to your home or to your business and the other two are hot legs and so you're going to have generally uh, you're going to have uh, 120 on each leg and then you're going to have 240 uh, between those now we do have some other voltages that we use and we can talk about those uh, here shortly. But this is, if you're ever digging behind uh, a house or in a residential area, apartment complex, and you run into something like this, you're looking at our secondary or service cable that is feeding uh, that facility. And so you'll kind of know what that is. This right here serves as our primary uh, cable. Our primary cable is, is what we, um, uh, run throughout our system. It serves as a main feeder uh, throughout an addition. It serves as a main feeder uh, underground for our system that comes out of our substations uh, in different areas like that. Generally, if you go downtown Oklahoma City, this is pretty much what's running uh, underground all over the place from different vaults uh, to different vaults. And so there's a, a number of different uh, parts to this cable that you can kind of see there. You have over to your right, you actually have the conductor itself. It's made up of stranded wire. Uh, that is aluminum wire, and there is a steel case, uh, kind of a steel core uh, that is in the middle of that. Then you have a jacketed conductor or the, the conductor jacket that goes right over it that offers a, a little bit of protection before you get to that poly insulation, which that is that eraser type. Uh, material that you can see in that orange uh, copper looking material that you see right there. And then you have an outer, an inner jacket that goes on top of that. And then again, you have that neutral ground. And that neutral ground is called concentric uh, ground. It is a group of copper wires that surround that conductor and serve as another neutral ground for that table. Now, our entire system is, is grounded, and everywhere that you go, you're going to find a neutral or a ground on our poles underground. And basically, the reason for that is that it allows us to keep a balance in your home. So if you ever have an instance where you have one part of your house that is dimmer 
or you and you have the other part of your house that is brighter you have an imbalance uh within the, the system in your home and so what's happening is that the electricity that is going to your house or your business uh is not being balanced properly and that's what that neutral conductor does it allows those two legs that that uh, those two hot legs to stay balanced where you have the same voltage on each side and so uh it is a really a uh, a uh, protection for your equipment that you use whether it's three phase or single phase uh in your home or your business it is what protects your equipment and allows it to run most efficiently and also serves as protection for you if there's ever a problem that will take that electricity to the ground hopefully will trip the breaker or will trip uh, or blow the fuse outside uh, at your transformer pole or the fuse pole and uh, will kill that out as to uh, make things safe for you then you have the outer jacket that is uh, another level of protection and so if you're ever digging in a in an addition or you're digging out uh, somewhere off site and you find some cable that is black with a red stripe you're going to know that that is our primary cable and it comes in a majority of different sizes uh some are uh we have one that's about the size of a we'll say a silver dollar and then we have another that is about the biggest round almost to about the size of the softball um and so we we use those for different things uh around our system now <clears throat> Trying to get my thing to work here. There we go. This is basically what it looks like in an addition. So if you're doing any addition work, you're going to have on that left side our transformers. Our transformers are all green boxes. Uh, we have some new pads that they sit on that they generally sit a little bit higher, but that those are going to be throughout the addition. We also have three-phase transformers throughout business parks or maybe even up to a hotel or anything that needs three phase and you'll find that transformer and under that underneath that transformer is going to be this secondary cable that you can find from this transformer over to the screen pedestal that secondary cable is generally going to be about three and a half to four feet below the ground uh, majority of the, of the time it is going to be or really about half the time it's going to be in pipe the other half is going to be direct buried and so if if you do dig down and you find some of that uh, the secondary service cable that we looked at earlier, that's what this stuff is going to be right here. It'll hook over to the secondary side of this transformer and it will go over to the pedestal. And that is how we begin to feed your house or your business. From that pedestal all the way over to your home or your business, there's going to be service wire. And that service wire is going to go into your meter base. Again, this right here is going to be about three and a half to four feet down. Uh, there are other applications. If it's under a parking lot, it might be a little bit shallower than that, but it'll be in pipe. And so that's kind of what that looks like is you'll have from transformer to pedestal to a meter base. That's really the pattern uh, for all underground additions or business parks or apartment complexes. That's really what you're going to find. So if you find a transformer and you know that you're going to be digging in a certain area, uh, you can you can be guaranteed that there is a primary cable that's coming into that, and there's a secondary cable that's going out of it, which means that there's going to be a pedestal somewhere around, or a home or a meter somewhere around that this transformer is going to be feeding over to. And if you are able to make almost a straight line from point A to point B, you're going to have a general idea of probably where that uh, where that cable is. Now we also have property lines, and we try to we we try to as all utilities do stay on one side or the other of that property line based on where our easement is. And so while this picture really doesn't do it justice for us, uh, you can we can you'll always have the uh, pedestal or the transformer on one side or the other of that property line which will give you a good indication of where that uh, where that cable is going to go. Now, on our system, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. We actually have uh, a few different things that we run on our system. We have transmission, 
which is basically our cross country. And we have distribution, which is what feeds uh, your homes and your businesses. And so the transmission feeds the distribution, which feeds your home. And that's kind of, that's kind of what that looks like. Now, whenever we begin to look at our transmission voltage, that's the cross country stuff. And, uh, and there's a reason I'm telling you about all this. I know that we're talking about digging, but our transmission voltages uh, go from 69,000 volts to 745,000 volts. And these are your large cross country lines. Um, we, we actually at OG&E have 69, 138 and 345 that we run on our system. And we also take power from some of those 500 kV and 745 kV lines on that distribution or on that transmission to feed into our distribution uh, underneath the Southwest Power Pool so that we can always make sure that we have enough uh, juice, if you will, to come and feed uh, your, uh, your home or your place of business. Now, we also have that feeds our primary uh, lines. If you're looking outside or you're driving down the, the road, you're going to see some lines up top, and those are our primary lines. And at og &E, we basically have four different voltages that we run for our distribution system. We have 4 kV. A lot of that is you'll have some that's downtown Oklahoma City. You'll have some that may be in uh, Shawnee or some out in, out in some rural area. We don't have much of it left, but there is some out there. You have 14.4, which is another primary voltage. It's mainly out in some of our rural areas, but our main two uh, voltages that we run for our primary in our distribution system are 12.5, which is 7,200 phase to ground, 12,500 volts phase to phase. And then we have uh, 34.5, which is 19,900 volts phase to ground or 34,500 volts phase to phase. Those are the gen are generally the two that we use. Now, if we were in a room, I would be asking you a couple of questions, but since we're not, I'll go ahead and, and kind of tell you why there are different voltages that we have. When we think about these transmission voltages, the reason that we have higher voltages is because they are able to have less amps. So the less amps that are on a line, the farther electricity can go. Therefore, you have uh, on your major cross country uh, lines that go from, we'll say California to New York, uh, those are probably going to be the 745,000 kV lines. On that, there's basically going to be no amps on it. Therefore, that, that electricity can uh, can flow very easy, it can flow a lot farther. But when we got, get down to our distribution voltage for our primary, 34.5 and 12.5, there's a lot more amps on that line. And amps really is the dangerous thing about electricity uh, that we really want to prevent anyone from coming in contact with. Now, when we go a little bit further into uh, what actually feeds the facilities that og &E does or PSO or any other electric utility, we have a job of stepping that down from this large voltage of 745 or 138 down to 12.5 or 34.5, all the way down to something that you can actually use. We do this by something that's called a transformer. And you've heard of transformers before, and some of you probably uh, know a little bit about those. But basically what a transformer does is it steps the electricity down from one voltage to another. So when we take, let's say 7,200 volts, and we feed it through a transformer, that transformer is designed to bring it down to a voltage you can use, which in most cases is going to be 12240. That's going to be run through our secondary lines to which our service lines will hook up to. And that goes over to feed to your house into your meter base. Now, this is an example, obviously, of an overhead, uh, an overhead line that we uh, use uh, really uh, in a majority of our system kind of outside of Oklahoma City. We have a lot more that's going underground. 
But I always think that if I'm telling somebody about this to visualize it overhead helps us to visualize it underground. So we have the primary, which goes to a transformer, steps it down to a voltage you can use, which then sends it over to your home into your meter base, which then goes through your box and distributes it through your home. And so for our secondary voltages, generally, and I left one off of here, I just noticed that, we have four different voltages. We have uh, 12208, uh, 120, uh, 240, that should be 140, 240, and we have 277, 480, or we have straight 480. The 277, 480, or just plain 480, you can, we actually you can go higher than that as well. Uh, but that's going to be for some lights or some specialty equipment uh, that is used. The 12240 is what's going to be used generally going to your home uh, or to a normal business. And then you have 12208 that is a three phase voltage uh, that will feed our three phase customers. Now, once we begin to take that idea, I wanna to begin to think about something else. A lot of times whenever we are digging in an area, we're generally focused on uh, we're generally focused on what's underground, but if you are around overhead lines, we have to be focused on what's overhead as well. And the reason for that is that it is very easy for some of this equipment to get into our overhead lines, whether it is a traco, kind of like you see before you, uh, a crane, uh, I've, had, uh, I've had different dump trucks, I've had a lot of different things, uh, as especially as a troubleshooter that I've seen get into our lines. Uh, in fact, if you go on to maybe check out YouTube, uh, there are some really, uh, you know, some really good uh, videos of um, uh, cranes and different things getting into our lines and you can kind of see what happens. But the main thing you want to watch out for is that knuckle. There's a lot of our lines that are and and even ONG or Cox or AT&T, a lot of fiber that runs right next to our pole line underground. Sometimes it will run overhead as you can see those bottom uh, dark lines on those poles are, but, but a lot of times they're underground. And so we've had a number of, of situations to where people are digging underground, uh, under our lines or very near our lines in a large piece of equipment and one thing that uh, that they don't think about all the time, uh, if you especially been, haven't been doing it for very long, is to watch out for that knuckle, the highest point on that boom that can get into our lines and can cause uh, a lot of different problems. Now, you can cause an outage, um, and if you were to get in between those overhead second li secondary lines, it would blow the fuse on that transformer and uh, would would kill that uh, secondary line out and and that's what a fuse is designed for. It sees a fault and it blows, killing out the power. So it's a, it definitely is a level of safety. Uh, if you have one that's big enough or you raise your, your uh, equipment high enough, uh, you can get onto our primary lines. And that's where we really get into a lot of trouble because that's a lot of, that's a lot of electricity that's flowing through those lines. And if you get in between those or touch one, then we have some major problems. And so we always want to make sure that people are that people are looking uh, looking overhead as well as looking underground as they uh, are digging uh, in the areas uh, that we are. Um, <clears throat> This is an example of somebody who um, got into uh, some of our overhead primary lines. Now, uh, this is more of a, a staged uh, situation showing what it would look like. Uh, this actually wouldn't happen uh, in this image because this line is grounded as that's what these uh, little cables are doing right here. But in this image, this is generally what it would look like. It would, uh, you would get up into those lines and you would have a large blue light that would come about right here and really begin to, uh, really begin to cause a lot of issues there as you would then begin to uh, become 
a, a problem on that line, you would actually trip out uh, the breaker inside the substation and you would become the fault. Now, our system is designed in a way that it will actually try to clear a fault off of the line. Uh, one way, one reason why we do that is because a lot of faults that we have are caused by trees. And those tree limbs will sometimes get in between those lines. It will trip the circuit where the circuit will blink. And if we didn't have this, then the circuit would be off. And then we would have to come back out. And you'd have a prolonged outage. But our system is designed that it will, it will uh, fall. It will see that fall. It will shut off and it will turn back on. And it will do this in three different cycles to try and burn off whatever is on the line. And so if it is a tree, it will burn that part of the tree in the clear where it saves us an outage call and it, and it gets you back on as soon as possible. But if you are the one uh, in your equipment that gets into this line, well, that's not going to clear out. And so you're going to see if you do not, if you are not able to get this out of the line, you're going to see three different hits on that equipment. And it is going to be phase-to-phase -phase voltage that's coming in there that's going to be a large blue light and it's going to be very loud and it's going to be pretty scary and so that's kind of what that looks like uh, by way of example now a lot of times if we were in person i would ask you about what would happen if you were in a case that you did get into something what would you do uh, some people would say that, well, we just turn the truck off and, and get out, or we would just sit there. I've actually had a lot of people say, well, we would just, just sit there. Well, the problem is that you have electricity that's now going into your piece of equipment. And a lot of times your equipment isn't necessarily grounded because it's on tires, but sometimes it is. And so what's going to happen is that electricity is going to be flowing through your vehicle and this is generally what happens when that occurs, is that there's going to be a fire that starts. You have fuel in that piece of equipment. Of course, you have the combustion uh, uh, situation that could happen and it becomes very dangerous. So in the case that you were to get uh, into something like this and it becomes a, a big problem, uh, I want to tell you that the worst thing that you can do is to just simply step out of your vehicle uh, or, or to, to try and, you know, just act like everything is normal. In the case that you get into something like this, what you want to do is you want to jump off. Whether you've hit something overhead or underground, you want to jump off of your vehicle as far as you possibly can. There is an induction uh, uh, part to this that you are essentially uh, the same voltage at that point as the piece of equipment, which is touching our, uh, our wires. And so by jumping as far as you can, you are reducing, uh, you are reducing any advantage that that uh, power might have over you in jumping away from that vehicle, allowing you to get as far away as possible as safely as possible to where you will not be feeling any of that induction that's coming off of that. And so anytime that you touch, if you were to step off or you touch anything electrical wise, whether you've hit it overhead or underground or anything like that, if you are touching that piece of equipment and the ground, you become the ground. There's one thing if you've ever dealt with electricity before, there's one thing that electricity is trying to do. It is trying to go to ground. That's all it wants to do. In fact, I've often said there's two things that electricity wants to do. It wants to steal from the other leg and it wants to go to ground. Those are kind of two things. So if you are in a piece of equipment or touch anything and you are on the ground, then you become the ground. And that's very important. Now, if that electricity hits you, it is going to pass through your body. And that's the scary part about this. It's not like a normal fire that will, you know, burn you on the outside. It goes through your body and it goes from one point to another. So you have two wounds if you're hit, an entrance wound and an exit wound. And that's kind of what these looks like 
Uh, you really can't find any good pictures of this because none of them are good pictures. These are pretty graphic. But you'll have a place where it goes in and a place it goes out. And from that, it will burn or cook, basically, uh, every part of the body that it goes through. And that's the, that's the, the danger of what electricity can do to somebody if they're not careful. Uh, this is not just going to be a... Uh, a accident that's going to last for you know a few weeks until you're healed or if it's a bad burn uh you know it obviously takes several months i understand there could be a lot of different situations but this one is going to affect you for years uh, because your entire internal body is going to have to heal get rid of the um of the, the burnt stuff right uh and so there's a lot of implications that that you will experience by going through an electric shock, and that's why this is so dangerous. Now, this is something that we want to put out there, and I'm not telling everyone this uh, to scare you to death. I certainly am not doing that, but what I wanna do is to help you to understand that we really, it's not really good to be fearful of electricity, but it's good to have a healthy respect of it. Uh, if uh, that, that was really one thing that, that my foreman taught me as I was coming up, uh, that he didn't want me to be afraid of it. He wanted me to respect it. If you can understand it, you can understand how to work with it uh, and understand what you can and cannot do. And so the reality is, is that if you're going to go out there and you're going to dig at a location, let's say you're going into an addition and you're going to be putting in uh, you know what this uh, we have a high majority of, of cases like this and if you are another utility you probably experience this too uh, but one thing that we have a lot of trouble with is is fences if you're going over to install a fence and you don't call on your locates and you get your you get your shovel out or you get your postal diggers out or you get you know some kind of hand you know hand equipment that you're going to be digging with and you get into one of our lines, whether it's our primary, primary or secondary, and you get it just right, uh, you know, a lot of people think, well, it'll just, you know, make a noise, it'll go boom and I'll walk away. Well, I can promise you that that is not always the case. And it only takes this much, 0.5 amps to stop your heart, 0.5. That's not very much. I don't think you can run a vacuum cleaner uh, off of uh, 0.5 amps. Uh, so that's that's really important. That's one reason why we want we really want to at OG&E and, and at an Oki, we want you to call in your locates so that you will know where that stuff is. And there's a lot of things that we can do at OG&E to actually help you in the case that you're digging around and don't know where our stuff is or may not have a good understanding we want to help you to be as safe as possible because we don't want you to be one of the number that get into it and experience something like this i'm sure that all of us have gone to an area uh, where we have asked for locates and we've had either locates that weren't marked or they're a little bit off I think that all of us have, have gone out somewhere and found that. Um, uh, we want you to know that, and this is a big thing that we push at OG&E, if there is any question about locates, uh, you always have the ability to obviously call uh, Oki for uh, another locate to come in, a second notice or something like that. You can also call OG&E. Uh, I won't speak on behalf of any other utility. Uh, I don't work for any other utility. but if it is us, we want you to call us. If, if you're having a lot of issues, uh, we can come out there and we can help you to identify where that mark is. Our, our uh, facilities are always marked in red. And, uh, and that's just going to tell you where the electric lines uh, are going to be um, for our system and then pretty much anywhere else really. But that tolerant zone is, is very important. If you're inside that tolerant zone, uh, for that uh, area, uh, we really encourage you to do a couple of things. One, we want to encourage you 
to make sure of where that facility is. And two, we want you to dig as safe as possible uh, so that you don't experience anything uh, that would be detrimental to you or your health. Now, what do I do in a case that my that I hit a power line, right? If we're talking about OG&E, what is the first thing that I can do if I hit something like that? Well, our, our encouragement is for you to stop. Stop what you're doing. Uh, if you are in a piece of equipment and you're in the middle of it and you can't get off of it, jump out of your vehicle. The majority of the time it's going to, it's going to blow the fuse. You're not going to have, um, you're not going to have anything uh, happen. It's going to be dead, but uh, you can hop out of your vehicle, but, but stop what you're doing. Get away, make sure you're safe. And then we want you to call us. These are some numbers that you can, you can call us at uh, in Oklahoma City or even our outside areas. But if you have an issue going on, let's say that you have a, a situation where you are in need of, of digging around one of our poles, um, you can call us and we will come out. If you're worried that that pole is going to fall over, it's going to, uh, you know, something funky could happen, call us. We'll come out and hold that pole for you. If you are going to be in an area where you're going to be digging around some overhead lines, uh, and you feel that it would be best if we might be able to cover that up for you. We want you to call us. We'll come out there and we'll cover up those lines for you. If you're going to be in an area where you are, you know that we have a lot of lines running through the ground uh, and you are, you know, wanting to see if we could possibly kill those lines out or do something to help you. We want you to call us uh, and we want to help you out. And that goes all the way back to our, our safety uh, culture as we want to do anything that we can to help you uh, in that situation. We will at that point uh, a lot of times we'll work out when you want to do things uh, but we will definitely immediately come out to assess whatever you're doing. We can fix whatever is broken. Uh, we can help you in any situation because we want to make sure that uh, we're as safe as possible whenever it comes to uh, digging in these facilities. Now, this is uh, an example of if you are going to get in uh, digging around some of our overhead lines and we can cover them up with those blankets and those snakes, we call those snakes. They're just rubber hoses, really, that we can put over those lines that will uh, give some or offer some protection for you uh, while you're digging. And so that's kind of an example that we have there. Um, I don't know, uh, really, that's, that's generally what... What I really try to cover, uh, there's a lot of information in there uh, whenever it comes to uh, digging around our facilities. Uh, the main thing that we really stress is uh, that if you see the wire and see any of our wire, uh, you're gonna, you should know it's our wire. That's a great time to call us. If you uh, see any of our pipe, we use gray, gray stick pipe uh, or we use red uh, or black roll pipe with a red stripe on that looks like our primary. If you get into any of that, we want you to call us. Um, uh, but we really encourage everybody to make sure and call in your locates. And if there's, uh, you know, some type of situation where it may not be safe, uh, you feel you, you don't understand where everything's at uh, for sure, or you don't know that you can uh, be safe while digging, that's a great time to call us because we want to help you uh, be successful in whatever job that you're doing. And we want to partner with you uh, while you're doing that job. And so uh, that's that's my presentation. And so I'm going to open it up. Uh, if there's any questions, I, I'll kind of give that to uh, MG. I'm not really sure how to work all this stuff. But uh, if there's any questions, I'd love to try and answer them. Okay. Um, first of all, um, just a reminder, everybody who is attending, um, stick around for just a little bit longer. We're going to do a drawing for that $25 Amazon gift card. Um, also, if you um, enjoyed this presentation or you want to be able to share it um, with other people, um, you are going to have a link to the recording tomorrow. And also, um, it'll be available on our YouTube channel and things like that. So I know that I saw and um, got a lot of information out of this, and I'll probably watch it a couple more times to let it soak in. Um, there was a question that was asked um, about right-of-ways being shared. 
And so since those right of ways are being shared with both electric and other utilities, how do you communicate changes within those right of ways, like wattage or volt changes and stuff like that that might be damaging the, the other other utilities? You're still muted. Let me click you. There we go. You hear me now? Uh, I guess my question would be what kind of changes um, that are going on. Uh, generally, if there's anything that's going on in an area where uh, we're running new facilities in or uh, we have a change to a set of plans that we have, uh, generally, that's all going to be worked through engineering uh, at OGE and our project managers that we uh, that we get with not only the developer or the you know wh whatever that looks like, and uh, and we get those plots and plans for for what's going on out there, and we'll actually have that area surveyed to see what's out there, and if we need to um, uh, you know contact other companies, we do that. Um, that's kind of how we handle that before we we ever uh, stick a shovel or anything in the ground. I don't know if that answers that question or not, but I think so. And um, if there is any follow up to it, feel free to submit another question to us. Um, that was the big question that was asked of us. Try um, is regarding the right of ways. Um, what I can do um, while I let follow up questions come in is I'll go ahead and do the drawing for that Amazon gift card. Um, we did have a pretty good turnout. We have 23 attendees. So let me jump in and do this random number generator. All right, and then let me start counting. All right, boom, okay. So the winner of the Amazon gift card is Guy Dale with Choctaw Electric. So good person to be in this training session i'm sure so guy you're one of our winners um what i will do is um email you um towards the end of business today um so be looking for an email from amazon to your um Chata electric email address so we'll have that out to you here in just a little bit um it doesn't appear that we got any more questions um garrett is there anything else you want to share before we wrap this up Let me get on me you again. That feedback, I always mess it up. Here you go, Garrett. There we go. That mute button's killing us. Um, <laughs> uh, we just want you to be safe out there. Um, and if there's anything that we can do at OGE to uh, help you succeed in what you're doing uh, and, and help you do it in the safest way possible, uh, especially when you're digging in and around our facilities. So, uh, just make sure and understand that, that we want to do that. Uh, we don't charge for any of that. If we need to hold a pole, we need to cover something up, we need to uncover something for you, switch something out. Uh, we don't charge for any of that. We want to partner with you to help you uh, succeed in what you're doing and do it the safest way possible. So be safe out there and please let us know if you need anything. Perfect. Thank you so much, Garrett. Um, we do appreciate OG&E's partnership, um, just like all of our member companies. I know the mission of OK Able When we provide damage prevention services, and those damage prevention services in turn keeps excavators safe. So we want to do everything we can um, to promote a safe culture out there with the excavation. So thank you so much, Garrett. Thank you for everybody who attended this session. Um, if you do have any follow up, uh, you want to reach out to um, og and &E or Garrett with questions, um, you can always email me. Um, my email address is easy. It's just the word education at oki811.org. Um, I can help facilitate that over to Garrett. And um, Or if you just have questions or uh, opportunities for training um, with your organization or construction crews, let us know. We want to um, partner with you, just like um, Garrett has said. Um, your projects, the success of your projects, um, rely on damage prevention and um, safe excavation as well. So we want to be a part of that as much as we can. So I thank you all for your attention today, your uh, participation, and I thank you for doing your part to keep Oklahoma safe. You all have a wonderful day, and we'll hopefully see you in the next session that starts at 3. Thank you, everybody. Bye.